Hi, I just wanted to take this opportunity to give you some information about the feedback that I've been getting from students and teachers who recently filled out the TOK Today survey. If you haven't filled that out, then you can still do so. I'll leave a link in the video description. Um, before I get to that, let me just say welcome. Uh, those of you who are new here, I'm, I'm Daniel. I run TOK Today. And uh, if you are new here, I hope that you're going to come back and, and let me know what you need. Uh, to do your TOK studies. Okay, many thanks to everybody who's filled in the TOK Today survey. Um, I'm just going to refer to my notes a bit um, over some of the findings that have come out from that survey. Okay, so first of all, over 200 students have filled out the, um, the survey and over 60 teachers have filled out the survey. So over 200 students, it's a drop in the ocean of TOK students who are entered in either May or November sessions, but that's a, you know, it's a pretty good number for a, a group of people who have largely finished their DP and have, have graduated now. The 60 teachers is a very high proportion of everybody who's filled in the survey, and that really interests me. Um, and some of the feedback that the teachers have given me is really insightful and very, very helpful. I'm going to come back to that later on. Let me just go through some of the sort of main findings so far from, from the survey. The immediate findings, the students are reporting their own grades. Um, I'm just interested in what the grade profile is of students who are using TOK today. Um, what I've got so far from the 200 plus students who've filled in the survey is that 40% of them are reporting that they got an A, which is wonderful in comparison to the, I think it's about 7% who get an A globally. 50% uh, are saying they got a B, which is great, compared to, I think, about 20% who get a B overall. And then 5% are C and 5% are D. Now, when we look at students who have paid for resources, so that's they've bought the essay notes or they've bought coaching sessions, then we get to 70% of them got an A and 30% of them got a B. And then, um, obviously, if you are paying to buy resources or paying for coaching, then you're extra motivated. So, um, you know, that those are the students who are working hardest to get the highest grades, probably. Um, but that, that figure is really important for me, for my marketing and for confirming that what I'm doing is, is the right thing and so on and so on. So um, that, that's really good. Now, obviously, I'm completely aware that that there is huge problems of sampling bias with this. Not only is it a tiny little sample, but it's a self-selecting sample, um, and, and you know, and only motivated students are going to be filling in uh, those results. Um, and, and also, we can't check the, we can't verify the validity, verify the validity of those results. So, um, and, but but it's interesting. It's useful for me. Talking about useful, I asked the question, how useful were the resources? And the students were all very positive about the, um, the, the use of the resources. No one said that the resources were not useful or particularly not useful. Um, they, they said to me that the, the, the free YouTube essay videos were the most useful resources by, by a long way. So that, that's interesting for me. And they also liked the free essay blog posts as well. And the students gave me lots of positive feedback, lots of positive comments, and thank you very much to the students who did that. Um, and I will um, use some of those uh, anonymised um, in, in, on the testimonials on the site and things like that, just to give confidence to future students. Okay, let's go to the teachers. So it surprised me that about a quarter of all the people who filled out the, um, the, the survey of teachers, and that, 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 that 60 teachers filled it out. That, that, it, it just shows me that there is a big teacher audience out there. And, and I know that some teachers are watching the, the videos and, and are using the resources on the site, but I just didn't realise it was such a, a large percentage. And of course, the May session schools on the whole are in, in the holiday period at the moment. So they're 
less likely to be filling things out anyway. So that really makes me think of, I, I do have a significant teacher audience out there, which interests me because I thought that all the teachers who were using online stuff were using theoryofknowledge.net or, or Cognity or, or one of those sort of more established sites. <laughs> um, so that got me to start thinking much more about, well, what do I provide for the teacher audience? And, and some of the teachers gave me some good feedback on that as well, uh, which I'll come to in a second. But maybe there's a gap between what theoryofknowledge.net is providing for teachers and, 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 and what's provided for students. And in that gap, I can start to, to fill things. I think possibly particularly around assessment. Come on to that in a second. The feedback from the teachers on student attainment was really, really interesting. Uh, and and I, I'd love to read the uh, IBD2 forms on TOK. Um, you know, that form you can fill in after the exam session to say what you thought of the, of the exam or what you thought of the assessment. Because this just gives me an insight into what's happening in a lot of schools. So some teachers said... A lot of teachers said the results were as they expected, the results that their students got. Some people said they were November schools and they didn't have any results yet. It's fine. However, quite a lot of teachers said that the results that came back were inconsistent. Right? Now, um, I've been teaching TOK for nearly 20 years and have come across this inconsistency problem many, many times. Um, and as an examiner... Um, I think that the current system is better than it was and the seeds of, of increasing the reliability and consistency of the assessment, uh, but it's still not, not 100%. So I've got to start thinking about ways to help teachers to reduce the inconsistency. Now, some of that is obviously with the examiners, and I can't influence that, but some of it's with us as, as teachers may be possibly, and, 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 and how we deliver the course and, and what we are putting in to the exams. Okay, just a little thing on inconsistent results if your students aren't getting what you expected them to get um, is, you know, if you get an opportunity to put in an EUR on the TOK essay and uh, it's not going to affect the student's progression into higher education or whatever, or um, the student, obviously the student has to agree to it, then do put in the EUR. I think there's quite a high level of success on EURs on um, TOK essays. A teacher asked me a couple of years ago to make a blog post and a video on why the best essays get mediocre grades, which is something which I've experienced down the line. And it's something that obviously a lot of, a lot of colleagues who are watching these videos are experiencing. So I made that video, I'll, I'll link it above. Um, and maybe we need to go back to that. Maybe we need to go back to look at um, why it is that some of those really outstanding exemplary essays come back with C, uh, <laughs> you know, sort of 5 out of 10 when you think they're 10 out of 10. So one of the approaches I've taken over the years is let's just have a fail-safe approach. Let's say to everybody, nobody's going to get an E. Everything that we, we do, we put in place to make sure that the grades are higher than an E, that everybody passes, and then everything else is a bonus. But clearly that's not sufficient. Clearly the students deserve more than that and, and we need to work to more consistency. So I, I've got some thoughts on how to do that and I'll, I'll sort of unveil those as we go forward. The other thing that came up that really interested me was that the teachers, the, the teachers talked a lot about using the essay guidance notes. Some of the teachers are using the essay guidance notes to unpack and understand the essays themselves. Um, some of the teachers are using the essay guidance notes as a plagiarism check, um, thinking that their students might be using them, so they want to make sure uh, that the students aren't just cutting and pasting them and so on, which is absolutely fine as well. And I, I say that quite clearly, that the students shouldn't be cutting and pasting them. That gives me some thoughts about the sorts of things that go into the essay guidance notes and how I can sort of adapt them so that they're better for teachers. So we'll be doing that in the, for, in the upcoming May 25 session. Um, 
the unpacking bit interests me. Um, I don't know if I can say too much at the moment, but I'm going to be uh, presenting at a, a major conference in September uh, on the uh, on unpacking the, the essay notes. So watch out for more details on that coming up. And, and overall, it gives me a lot of good ideas for what I can do to provide resources for teachers going forward. And I think that the survey sort of has taught me to maybe sort of modify the direction of the channel and the direction of the website and the resources that I'm producing so that um, I can provide more for teachers. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts or comments, then please either leave them in the video chat below or email me at daniel at tktoday.com. Uh, if you haven't filled that server, then do that. If you like this video, press like. If you give me a subscribe, I'm super, super grateful and super happy for that. It really helps me out. Uh, have a great day. And as I always say, stay toptastic. Bye.